So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Anthony Morrow, CEO and co-founder of Open Money, who will highlight some of the findings from their recent report. Over to you, Anthony. Uh, thank you, Nicola. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, well, to say bright and breezy, it's half nine, but I suppose that is the new bright and breezy in, uh, in these times. Um, and just want to talk through uh, for the next uh, uh, few minutes uh, around um, what employers can be doing uh, to help their employees um, uh, deal with some of the issues that, uh, that, you know, that we're finding um, uh, in personal lives. I think it's quite easy to uh, look at employees uh, and, and see them in that sort of relationship, but behind the scenes and when they leave work, then uh, like many people, uh, they have uh, different worries and concerns and, and, and ideas and objectives. The employers can play a really fundamental uh, part in, in helping either solve or achieve. So I think the first place to, to start really is uh, around what uh, the financial situation was for the country uh, pre-COVID. Now, uh, we have just completed our second review of uh, personal finances and it's called the advice gap. And, it, and it's basically around um, the, um, uh, uh, the, the provision of financial advice uh, to people, whether it's free advice through things like uh, Step Change or Citizens Advice Bureau, all the way through to wealth managers uh, uh, for those people who, who've got a lot, of, a lot of money. And one of the things we do is we take a snapshot of uh, people's views uh, and, and circumstances with regards to their own, their own, their own finances. And, and the report was originally carried out by Citizens Advice in, in 2015. And uh, it was a fundamental part of the reason why we, we, we set up Open Money because we, 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 we saw that for a lot of people who don't have a lot of money, who don't have a lot of financial awareness, then uh, knowing where to go to get advice or guidance on their finances was, was a real challenge. And, and when they did find someone, then uh, it, it, you know, in many, many cases, it turned out to be too expensive or too intimidating. So what we wanted to do was sort of bridge that gap so that people had an alternative to uh, charities uh, for getting, you know, good quality uh, advice, whatever their wealth and, uh, and, and, and the price that we thought they could, could afford. Uh, either I'm waffling or Nicola is just firing through these slides. So she just wants me to get through to the end. But he, the, the first slide here, we've just got a bit of a snapshot uh, to, some of the, to some of the findings here. And, and as you can see, what we're, what we're seeing, this was pre-COVID, was that for many people, uh, their personal financial situation was already pretty precarious, uh, you know, with almost half uh, of the population, uh, the working population, uh, running out of money sometimes uh, before their, their payday, and that unexpected bills and one-off costs uh, was a cause of financial difficulty for, for one in four people. So, you know, whether or not we can relate to those uh, uh, or, or not, you know, this is a real, you know, these are real issues uh, for, for people. This, I mean, this report we carry out with YouGov, you know, over two and a, you know, I think over two and a half thousand representative people. So, so we think it's pretty uh, representative uh, of the nation. And there's some real key things here around it and some worrying things here, particularly with, you know, almost a third of people uh, turning to short-term debt, um, you know, so the payday lenders, credit cards, uh, uh, overdrafts uh, just to get through uh, their, their essentials. So if we look at this and go, right, well, this is, uh, th this was what life was like, you know, in, in at the beginning of March when the groundwork for the review was done, then, you know, it's reasonable to, to think that actually going forward um, uh, with everything that's coming through on uh, with COVID, uh, it, you know, th 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 these things aren't going to improve. So, and if we move on to the next one, then again, uh, uh, a snapshot that YouGov did uh, last month uh, following on uh, shows that, you know, unsurprisingly, uh, things, have got, uh, th things have got worse with, you know, two thirds 
uh, or, or, you know, of people, you know, of income uh, having been lost and, and over a third of people thinking it's going to take over a year for that situation to recover. So, so this is a snapshot of, of the nation and, the, and then obviously uh, a large part of these, uh, of, this, uh, of these people are going to be employees. So this really turns to what employers can do to understand these issues that will be affecting a large part of, uh, of their workforce. Uh, and that's not to say that SMEs obviously haven't got their own problems uh, to face uh, in, in, the coming, in the coming months. Uh, you know, it's every, every day we're either reading about you know, large businesses making significant cuts, losses, going into administration, uh, and you know, and it's not, uh, you know, it's not unreasonable to think that that's, that those problems uh, filter down to uh, to SMEs and and, and smaller uh, smaller businesses. So, and if we look at what um, uh, the review we did with almost a thousand SMEs across the country, uh, then you know, what are the issues that are impacting uh, their list of uh, concerns? And it's quite good to see that actually, at the high, that, you know, at the top of their, uh, of their list is around uh, keeping uh, employees safe. Now, you know, you think that would be a that would be a given, but you know, I'm sure we could all think of some, you know, uh, uh, fast fashion retailers where you know you probably think that you know they don't, you know, those those bar, that bar graph is very different in terms of uh, uh, in terms of worries, but you know, largely employees recognize that keeping their employees safe not only from covid but also uh, uh you know safe from uh the impact of uh some of the knock-on effects like you know in, in, in mental well-being and health uh is, is high up uh, along you know along with uh keeping the business uh trading and you know maintaining any loss in sales and, and just keeping in business so so worrying times not only for employers uh, but also uh, also employees so uh moving on uh nicola there and then turning the uh you know turning the focus onto employees then unsurprisingly you know, almost half uh of, of people uh, main worry has been around job security, uh, you know, knocking on to uh, looking after their families, which clearly having an income and a job uh, is fundamental to being able to do that. And then not far behind that has been around their, around their personal finances. And again, if we go back to that previous slide around where uh, a large part of the country's personal finances are, then... Um, uh, it's, it's unsurprising to see that it is such a worry, particularly when it's related around salary uh, reductions and, and job security and, and really knowing how in the future bills are going to be paid and debts are going to be paid. So, so again, this really underpins the fact that for employees, uh, what the fundamental parts are is that um, keeping their jobs uh, and, and, and making sure that they can continue to pay the bills and manage the debts that they've uh, that they've accumulated uh, up until now are absolutely key. So this moves us uh, on to what are employers doing at the moment to to help uh, doing that. And if we look at um, the benefits that most uh, 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 large businesses are currently offering their employees, then you know benefit schemes are not a new thing. I think you'll find that most large companies offer some form of uh, employee benefit platform, uh, which has the usual thing. So a lot of these uh, will, will be familiar to certainly the larger employers that are, uh, are within uh, Pro Manchester. Uh, and uh, you know, it, again, it's good to see that at the top of that, we're looking at around uh, schemes that can help with people's stress levels and well-being, and then further down, uh, access to financial advice for just under a quarter of the workforce. But you can see by those percentages that actually these benefits and access to the benefits uh, is by no means uh, a given uh, for a large part of the workforce, and, and, and these tend to be 
uh, the preserve of the larger schemes, uh, large companies. Uh, and, and why is that? Well, you know, on, on the right hand side there, we look at question four. It's because for most SMEs, they, they, they feel as though these schemes are, uh, are just too big for them. Uh, they're too expensive and they become a you know, really complicated uh, uh, system to actually set up. And, and all of those three things are, are correct when you look at the traditional providers of the schemes to the large employee benefit uh, consultants uh, who charge you know, pretty big fees uh, for, for, for setting up, for administering, uh, and those fees make it uh, prohibitive for all but the largest uh, largest companies. So, actually, there isn't a um, you know a, a major provider there that can deal with smaller businesses with you know less than a couple of hundred uh, employees in there. And certainly for those people uh, with less than a hundred or fifty employees, then the, the large employee benefit consultants simply aren't geared up to or interested in providing. Uh, services for them, uh, which is you know which is perverse, really, given that you know small companies with less than fifty people make up the vast vast majority uh, of the uh, of the companies in, in this country. So moving on, uh, and to to look at how companies can support their employees. So I think what we've seen from the findings so far is that beyond uh, job security which you know, is always going to be dependent on specific companies and their approach and their strategies as to how they're going to manage the uh, uncertainty going forward, then uh, helping their employees uh, feel more in control and more confident around their, their finances is going to be a really well-received um, uh, benefit uh, for people. You know, so everyone... Uh, I think, you know, has uh, either wealth or debt or bills that they manage on a day-to-day -day basis and being able to find ways in which they can improve how they do that and, and whether or not it's making savings, making better investment decisions or, or just being able to, it's something as simple as setting up uh, uh, budgets, anything that can help them feel not only uh, less isolated but also more in control uh, then is always going to be a, a, a positive uh, point. So, you know, without going down the bullet points, these are the key things that we think um, that businesses uh, should be talking or providing to their employees uh, just, uh, you know, on, on a basic level to ensure that uh, they're doing what they should be doing uh, as an employer. So that's really the presentation. Uh, you know, work life, we set, uh, work life up because we recognize that the, um, uh, the, the, the service that we we're providing through open money uh, directly to the customers uh, could uh, you know, easily be transferred uh, for employers to be offering uh, to their employees as a means of really identifying themselves as a positive uh, employer. Um, you know, where we're looking at things uh, more than simply providing salary, which is clearly really important, as we've seen. Uh, but beyond that, how can you differentiate yourself as an employer to make sure that not only do you attract and retain the best employees, but also that you're getting the most out of your employees? You know, because obviously, you know, an employee that's got worries outside of work, you know, almost certainly is not going to be uh, operating on uh, all cylinders uh, in work. So again, just recognizing that these small things can add a lot of value uh, in, you know, across the business. Thank you, Nicola. Thanks, Anthony. Um, so I'm gonna start with a few questions, if that's okay. And then if anybody Thank else you. in the audience have got any, if you can just pop them in the chat box, then uh, we'll go through them as and when they pop up. So first of all, have you noticed a shift in the last few years with regards to the benefits and support employees expect from their employer? And if so, what do you think caused that shift? Well, I, I think so. I think it's on both sides as well. So not just only in terms of uh, what the employees expect from the employers, but I think employers are now recognising that uh, employees um, uh, really uh, appreciate a lot more than the, the, the traditional uh, payroll 
and you know and and, and holidays both of which are you know always really important and and that sort of trend has been uh, you know uh, growing not only from the large companies for whom you know benefit packages as i say have been around for for a long time but i think also from the new um uh, uh new startup uh type industries where actually the the non-financial rewards that are offered uh, have been used to uh, differentiate themselves and attract uh, talent where uh, employee uh, employees are looking for you know lo looking for different things so not only is it just you know um, uh, uh, challenges in a workplace and, and and progress and the ability to uh, you know, further themselves individually and, and from a career point of view, but also the opportunity to enjoy different things that they may not get from 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 other employers. So, from an other employers' point of view, it's become increasingly important for them to offer non-financial benefits to their employees. And I think, as a result of that, employees now uh, expect that sort of you know ad additional stuff. So, simply saying, you know, here's a job offer. Uh, this is what we're going to pay you. Here's the amount of uh, holidays. Um, really to try, you know, it, it, employees are now expecting, and what else is there? What other benefits do you provide uh, uh, around that? And, and because of where uh, the country is from a personal finance point of view, then the idea of uh, those benefits, including financial advice, financial well-being, uh, uh, things around mental and uh, <clears throat> mental stress uh, has naturally become more important for for employees because they are the things that are affecting more and more people. Absolutely, and I know I know it's something close to your heart. And um, on the slides you showed before and after COVID, and there's obviously a difference. But Regardless of that, do you think there's always been a need for more financial support support in the workplace? I think so, because if you look at the you know one of the key benefits that most employers provide, well, in fact, all employers provide now by law, uh, is a workplace pension. Then, providing a way in which uh, employees can understand what that actually means, it you know feels like a, a natural. Thing. For a lot of people, pension is pretty complicated. Um, you know, not a lot of people understand what auto enrollment means for them. You know, they they see a deduction every every month in their in their payslip. But I'd be surprised if a lot of people understand what funds they're in. What does it mean in terms of what they're going to get back at retirement? Which are really important um, questions to be answered. So, dovetailing that, uh, really, you know, uh, quite expensive. Uh, benefit for an employer to have to provide, then making sure that your employees really appreciate it and get the most out of it feels, you know, pretty, you know, common sense really. Absolutely, having somewhere to go to to get that advice and not just typing it into Google. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, um, we, we know what happens if you consult Dr. Google too much. Exactly. So, in a post-COVID world, how do you mm. see employee benefits changing to meet the requirements of new ways of working, such as remote and flexible working, things like that? Well, I think with uh, the remote, the, then the ability to access things digitally has just become even more important, hasn't it? So, being able to communicate, uh, make those benefits available to your employees wherever they are, so not just being in the office. Uh, through either through webinars or, or, or videos and being able to communicate like that, then you know th those sort of things are uh, you know are going to become more to the uh, come more to the front. Uh, and then also the types of benefits as we've seen again at the, at the beginning of our presentation, uh, finances. You know, over the next eighteen months, two years are uh, you know are going to become really important. So that sort of support. Uh, and, um, you know, to your employees, you know, I think is vital. Absolutely. And in terms of um, the technology that's out there, what developments do you think um, there will be, like AI, there's all sorts of things that's changing all of the time. How, what do you see the future looking like? 
Yeah, well, I think, well, personally, I think AI, certainly in financial services, is a bit of an overplayed hand. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of people saying they're involved in AI when actually, you know, you have a look and it's, it, you know, it's, it's far from a you know, GCSE AI at best. You know, a lot of things are decision trees and, uh, and very basic machine learning. So uh, I think where it will go in the short term, uh, again, it's just rather than the technology, actually the, the quality and the relevance of the benefits as opposed to the actual technology platform that it, that it sits on. Because it, the technology platform beyond it being accessible and easy to use doesn't need to be um, uh, that great for it to be, to be effective. But far more important is the, you know, is the benefits of actually being of use to, to the employees. So I think you, you can find with some platforms, employee benefit platforms, they're sort of thrown together without much thinking of whether or not they're going to be, um, you know, they're going to be appreciated. You know, so I think what we'll find are benefit platforms with much more choice for employers to make so that the benefits they offer are relevant to their workforce because, you know, it's, uh, you know, there's a really disparate type of uh, SME base out there, you know, from your, you know, your, your, your five, 10 man web design company to, you know, a automotive garage you know they're, they're, they're you know they're still they're still the same businesses you know and their employees are still largely got the same the same issues but i would guarantee that the employees have different outlooks on what they what they benefit so flexibility and and choice for the employers to fit their employees uh, is going to be key excellent so on that note then i know during lockdown, you guys have been incredibly busy creating work life that's just mm. been uh, launched. Do you want to chat through that? Let us know why you moved into that space, how it works, all of that type of thing. Yeah, so we acquired a, uh, a small employee benefit platform last year. Uh, it was called Jargon Free Benefits. Uh, and the reason for it was we, we wanted uh, to provide our services, which are, you know, money management app with investment uh, management services uh, attached to it uh, we wanted to provide that to into the workplace we, we saw that the workplace was become, going to become an increasingly important space in which to offer financial uh, financial services and uh, you know obviously backing up our thoughts that employers were going to become increasingly um, important in terms of uh, how they could support their employees, then we looked at a way in which we could offer what we think is a really great product with the Open Money app um, to a wide to a wider wider market. So we made the acquisition, and then we spent you know the last nine months um, uh, really developing it to, be, to become very much in the Open Money uh, in the Open Money form, and you know and that's where that's where we've got to. Uh, we actually brought it forward to where we were going to launch it, which was, which was planned for later in the year, beginning of 2021, uh, as a result of, uh, uh, of COVID, because we, 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 you know, we saw an opportunity there. We did have uh, a mortgage proposition uh, that we were looking to launch in June, but obviously with everything going on, we took the decision that actually waiting you know, three quarters uh, wasn't going to be a, a you know wasn't going to be a massive problem for us so we we sort of switched the two products around uh, so that mortgages launches in the beginning of next year uh, and we brought uh, the work life platform uh, forward uh, and that's and that's where we've got to we think actually to the rest of this year uh, employers offering a free benefits platform to their employees is an, is a really easy but really powerful message to give their uh, uh, employees at a time where there isn't a lot of positivity out there. Absolutely. And what's the appetite been like from <laughs> the employers? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's been really well received, you know, as, as you'd expect. Um, so, um, yeah, we're, we've, we've had a lot of interest. We've got new schemes starting every day uh, on top of the schemes that we already had in place 
than the business that we'd already inquired. So it's, you know, it's important. This isn't a brand new business. You know, we've already got, you know, 20,000 employees sat on there across, I think, 400 employers. So that's, you know, shows what our target, target market is. So it's a proven, it's a proven product that we've, we simply polished and refined and, and hopefully made more relevant for, for, for today's uh, employer. So what three things should employers do now to support their staff? Uh, well, um, install work life. I think that's, that's I, I think that's number one. <laughs> number two is uh, install work life. Uh, <laughs> now, I think, I, I, I think the key uh, important thing is to look at how they're communicating to their employees and what, and, and try and understand um, what their own employees' concerns are. Because I think it's quite easy to just, for, at this point, and understandable, just to focus on the business. And because obviously all the businesses are going through uh, uncertain times and, and trying to keep that business, you know, trying to keep your business going, making sure it's, 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 it's positioned to come out of, um, you know, th this COVID problem w w whenever we do do that, but come out of it uh, as strong uh, as possible. And you can sort of forget about the importance of your employees. So really looking at how you communicate, trying to understand what is concerning them. Uh, and then from that, you can then start to put in place um, solutions for that because, you know, employees are a fundamental part of every business. You know, without them, you know, without my employees, we, we, we would have no, no business. So it's really important to make sure that um, we, we, we create an environment where our employees are, you know, are comfortable, they're confident, they're enthusiastic, uh, despite how hard that may be at this point in time. So, so doing things, there's no silver bullet to all this, uh, but making sure that employees feel appreciated and feel as though their employers are, uh, are thinking about them and are, are taking them into account is, is a really important uh, point of that. And I think the final point, and this is one that, um, you, you know, we, we, we sort of nailed early, early doors is trying to create certainties, uh, as many certainties as you can for your employees. So uh, we recognized, you know, so much, you know, you know, not just from a financial point of view or an economic point of view, there's so much that um, no one, no, nobody knew about is from this COVID that we wanted to try and make sure that where we could, we could provide certainty to our employees. So that was around working from home. So we made a decision early that we would work home for at least three months, regardless of uh, what the government said. And that, for us, that enabled us, you know, our employees to get their, um, get their head in a place where they were going to be working from home, not coming into the office for three months. And we weren't going to be have to every two weeks seeing what the government said. Because I think a large part of all of this uh, has been mental resilience and being able to get yourself prepared and in a, in a situation, you know, in a position where uh, the you know, inevitable changes that are going to re uh, result from this, you can, you can, you can deal with them. Uh, and then the second one was we made a decision where we weren't going to furlough anyone uh, and we could turn around to people and say, well, actually, we might change our focus and what we're going to be working on. Um, but, you know, you can do that, uh, you know, from the comfort of knowing that we're going to work through this and, you know, no one's going to be getting made redundant or anything like that. So we were very fortunate to be able to do that. But it's those small um, uh, certainties that really add a lot of value to, to uh, employees. So where an employer can, you know, speak to their employees and give them some sort of reassurance and take some of the stress away from them, then that, I think they're the vital one. Absolutely. Just that feeling of security is so, yeah. so important. And the fact that you've been able to do that through all of this mm. is incredible. Yeah. Um, so we had a question come through on the chat box. Um, if anybody else has got any, just fire them through. So the first one, would you see the pandemic act as a, sorry, would you see the pandemic act as a trigger for wealth management and robo advisory companies prov to provide more support stroke products that cater to the masses over the long term? 
Yes, I, I, I think um, rather than just categorizing them, I think there's going to be a lot of businesses that are going to have to evolve their, their product set to become more relevant to the, to the market. So it's not unreasonable to think that actually the number of employee or no, rather employees the number of people out there who over the next couple of years are going to be in a position or comfortable in making long-term investment decisions when they're facing job insecurity uh and, and and simply wanting to save rainy day funds i think i think one of the things this pandemic has highlighted and i hope will change behaviors is the fact that far too few people have any sort of emergency fund to deal with uh, the real unknowns. So I think the numbers where you know people had less than a month's savings in place, um, you know, was, was pretty stark. And, you know, it was always high, but I think this has really highlighted the importance of that. So I think uh, products and solutions that can help people build up those foundations from that. Uh, will, will, will really be important. And I think that will lead the traditional robos and wealth managers who are really about building up assets and investing money. That might lead them to diversify their products because clearly, you know, trying to grow customers simply by asking them to invest is going to become even harder than it already was. Absolutely. So on that, you focus quite a lot on mental health mm. um, and I know that that's included that's quite a big part of the platform that you're offering yeah do you want to talk around that yeah we've got a partnership with Thrive who are an NHS uh, approved uh, mental well-being service provider and they have an app and it you know it provides support and a whole range of tools that people can use um, we got you know, it doesn't matter where they are, you know, even, even if they don't, even if you don't think you've got, um, you know, mental health, uh, conditions, these are just, you know, it's a whole range of things that can help people just feel a bit more calm and comfortable and supported around that. And, you know, there's been a lot spoken about mental health over the last uh, few years, all good stuff because it's, it's really been one of those taboo subjects where people don't like to talk about it uh, but it affects so many people in different ways that actually anything we can do to help people um, become a bit more comfortable in talking about that even if it's to a total stranger through an app um, it, you know it's only going to be a good thing isn't it absolutely and that's the starting point isn't it just starting mm -hmm. talking about it and the fact yeah. that it's out and you know people are is Re just incredible yeah. so excellent have we got any more questions from the audience any more oh that's good they're, they're <laughs> too busy they're too busy they're too busy signing up to work life that's why <laughs> how do you sign up to work life very easily <laughs> well, we'll send all the details around you, you just go you can just go to just go to the website i won't i won't totally uh, promote it but it's, it's pretty easy to find if you google open money work life or come up Fab. or worklifebenefits.co.uk <laughs> I think yeah I'll send the details out <laughs> oh that's good and cool. also uh, and if for those people interested and if they've got 15 minutes to spare they should download the advice gap report that you can find on our website Oh, well, I can send that link as well. So everybody's got it along with the slides that we had at the beginning. So I'll send that all out after this. So Perfect. I don't think we've got any more questions. I just want to say thank you ever so much. That's been really interesting. Um, thank you for everyone who's joined us today. And we'll also pop it on YouTube in case you want to watch again. Excellent. Thank you, Nicola. Thanks, everyone, for uh, joining and listening to me for ramble on for half an hour. Thanks, everyone. Take okay. care.